How do you assess the situation on ground and what can you tell us about the broader implications of these clashes? Well, the situation on the ground is uh, simply tragic. You have two and a half million Palestinians in Gaza who are under siege and occupation, who have no shelters to seek safety in, who have been pummeled with uh, um, um, uh, bombardment, constant bombardment from Israeli uh, uh, jet planes. Um, and so far, we've lost at least 16 uh, children, uh, uh, approximately six women, and one disabled man, those were among the nearly 70 Palestinians killed in Gaza alone. And on the ground in the West Bank, the situation is not any less tense. Israeli measures uh, and brutalization continues in occupied uh, Jerusalem, as well as in other cities around uh, the West Bank. Nightly raids continue and continue to escalate, as do settler attacks on Palestinian uh, uh, towns and villages and, and uh, neighborhoods in uh, uh, Jerusalem and inside Israel. So all in all, the totality of this uh, of the situation is a an alliance, if you will, um, uh, an exchange of roles between Israeli settlers who are right wing and racist and march down the streets chanting death to Arabs and Israeli occupying forces that use all the uh, military power and might at Israel's disposal. And it's a military superpower, as we all know, uh, especially in the region against a population that is basically defenseless and has nowhere to go. All right. Also now the UN Security Council will hold another emergency meeting to discuss the escalating conflict. What can we expect from that? Well, uh, unfortunately, the last time, uh, less than 24 hours ago, uh, the Security Council met. It was the United States that uh, prevented the adoption of even a statement on the issue. And several countries, including Ireland, for example, uh, expressed their frustration with this obstructive U.S. role. Uh, the United States has so far uh, chosen and not to uh, exercise its expected role of leadership in the region. And the only thing we've heard uh, are expressions of, of solidarity and support with Israel um, and, and no semblance of, of even recognition that Palestinians too not only have a right to protection and, and self-defense, but they also have rights under international law as an occupied population. Israel remains the occupying power. It is violating um, all tenets of international law in the way it is employing power uh, and, and force against uh, Palestinians in Gaza and across the occupied West Bank. Right, and speaking of the role of the United States, what can you tell us about the role of the international community as a whole? We know that, and as you just mentioned, that Joe Biden has thrown his support behind Israel. So what do you make of the extent of the impact of repeated international calls for calm? Well, regrettably, these calls, unless they are coupled with measures of accountability, unless Israel feels that it will be held accountable for these violations, that it would pay a financial or political price for continuing to violate Palestinian rights, to violate international law, to brutalize the Palestinian people, then it has no incentive, really to uh, stop what it's doing. In fact, it, it will continue to feel encouraged to, uh, to continue acting with impunity so long as it receives all this financial, political uh, um, uh, support from the United States without any uh, uh, other actors stepping in. We've heard from elected officials, even in the United States, calling on the uh, Congress to, um, and in the UK, and even in, in, in Canada, and I would assume as well some representatives in, in India, saying that this situation is untenable, that countries have to step in and take individual measures, like conditioning uh, um, uh, their uh, cooperation and agreements with Israel to its adherence of uh, to international law, stopping military aid. Uh, making sure that uh, the markets in these countries do not um, accept uh, settlement products, products produced on stolen Palestinian land uh, in, 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 in contravention of international law and in, in, mm. in really in a commission of a war crime uh, under the Rome Statute. So there are many measures that individual countries can take. India, for example, can play a very significant role, a, a, a morally moral leadership role in uh, putting the brakes on this Israeli intransigence and impunity by making sure that its 
relations, its considerable financial and military cooperation with Israel are conditioned upon respect for international law. Otherwise, what, there's no incentive uh, to de-escalate. There's no incentive to end the occupation, which is at the core, really, of all these uh, uh, these escalations. We have to remember that the daily life of Palestinians is a life of violence, even if you don't see it on TV. It's a life of being subjugated to a foreign military occupation that controls every aspect of, of your life and uses force and brutality and racist laws to maintain that occupation. So there's nothing mm. calm about returning to before this escalation as for Palestinians at the very least. All right, Ms. Nooruday, thank you so much for joining us with your inputs on that.